Morning everybody, welcome back to Brandon Lester Fishing. Another beautiful early fall morning here in Middle Tennessee. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in today. If you hadn't, go hit that subscribe button for me. We're gonna try to catch some crappie today. One of the simplest ways that I know to catch crappie. Kind of takes me back to when I was a kid. There's just something about it. I'll show y'all how I'm gonna rig up and then we'll go catch a few. Y'all stay tuned. All right, I'm gonna start out by showing you guys how I rig up a slip bobber rig. So basically what a slip bobber rig is, if you just use a stationary float that has the little wire that comes down and you just clip it on your line, whatever depth you set, that's, that's the depth. There is no way to vary between. Crappie set up in different depths, different days, different situations. I've been catching crappie anywhere from 10 feet all the way down to 20, 21 feet. So I need to be able to you know, vary my depth depending on the day, depending on the spot. That's why you use a slip bobber rig. And I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up and just how simple it is, how easy it is. We'll go through it step by step and then we'll catch a few fish. So first off, what you're gonna need, you're gonna need a slip bobber. This one is made by Thiel. And these, uh, I've experimented with several different ones. These are the ones, I think they're called the Pro Series or something like that. Um, they actually have a brass, insert that goes through the middle of them and that's that's a big key because it just slides up and down your line a whole lot easier they work a lot better than the cheaper ones that are just plastic on the inside those don't slide up and down your line as good so get you some of those um, there's different sizes doesn't really matter then you're going to need some bobber stops you can find these anywhere um, these are just little bobber stops and, and all you do you just slide your line through that little black part right there and then slide that knot and tighten it up on your line so you're going to end up with this right here when that slip bobber slides up your line it's going to hit that little knot and you can slide this knot up and down your line to vary your depth so that's a very important part you're going to need some of those and then basically all you're going to need is just a hook um, and a weight and a barrel swivel and you'll be good to go so let's set this bad boy up right quick okay so first thing i did i put that bobber stop on and these bobber stops come with these little bitty beads i'm going to put one of these beads on my line that just goes on above the float then i'm going to thread the float on my line all right let that slide up the line we're done with that Okay, we gotta have some weight. So I've got a 1 8 ounce, just a bullet weight, a bass bullet weight. You can use a split shot if you want to. Slide that up your line. Now we're gonna tie. We're gonna tie on a barrel swivel. Okay, we got the swivel tied on. Now we're gonna tie us a little bit of a leader. And we're gonna make our leader coming down to our minnow maybe 18 to 20 inches long, something like that. And now we'll just tie the hook on. I'll just use a Palomar knot because it's quick. And now we have just a basic slip bobber rig. We've got, starting from the bottom, we got the hook. We've got an 18 to 20 inch liter of six pound test fluorocarbon. We've got a barrel swivel. We've got an eighth ounce bullet weight the bobber, the slip float, just a, a thill slip float with a brass insert. We got a bead up above it so it'll slide up and hit the, the bobber stop. And right here is what makes the whole system work. That's a bobber stop that slides up and down your line so you can vary the depth of wherever you're fishing. All right, now let's get us a minute on here. Let's get over here by this brush pile and let's see if we can catch a crappie. There he goes. One's got it, I don't know. Yeah, we got him. A lot of times a crappie will just ease off with it. You guys that fish with with minnows and, and bobbers a lot for crappie, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of times a crappie, they don't just sink that float, they just barely ease off with it. That's exactly what that fish right there did. First fish of the morning. What you wanna do, you wanna let them kinda ease off with it for a minute, let them run with it, make sure they get the bait good. And then uh, put the steel to them. That's a lot of fun. I mean, I don't care who you are. I don't, I don't care. I mean, I, I'm to the point like I don't mess with minnows a lot. 
I don't buy minnows a lot just because I mean, they can get expensive when you buy them every day but I just wanted to show an easier way a simpler way you know because catching crappie on on a jig let's face it it does it takes some practice feeling them and, and getting a feel for knowing when you're getting a bite and and this is just a much simpler way that anybody can do and that's that's why i wanted to do this video i don't think i talked about my line size and rod setup and all that i'm using um straight 10 pound just vicious mono nothing special on the line there we got another fish going here got him oh that feels like a good one there definitely a crappie he's about the same size as that last one darn good fish flip him up in here looks like that other one's brother and i'm hooking them fish i'm letting them go with it for a second see i'm just hooking them right there barely in the lip so it takes them a minute to get that god that fish is fat it takes them a minute to get that minnow in their mouth good keeper i'm gonna let them go today but fish probably weighs a pound and a half i would i would say these particular fish right here are in about uh, I'm catching them out of about 12, 13 feet, something like that. The stump that they're sitting on is in about 16 feet of water. But back to the line size and rod setup and all that, before that fish uh, interrupted me, I've got 10 pound vicious mono on my main line. I've got going down to the swivel and then when I put the swivel on and I run my leader down off of that swivel, I put six pound fluorocarbon on my leader. Now you could just use the, the 10 pound, that would be fine. I just like to run down to a little bit smaller line. I, that's just what I like to do, but you can use up to eight or 10 pound. I wouldn't go much bigger than that for crappie just because crappie can be a little bit line shy. I don't care what anybody says, they are. And I'm using my seven foot two light action Mustad detector rod and a 2500 size spinning reel. But you can do this with about any rod and reel. I mean, you could do this with a push button reel. You could do this with a, a bait casting setup if you wanted to, use about whatever you want to. Another thing that's very important anytime you're live bait fishing for any kind of fish, make sure that that minnow that you've got on there has got some life to him. Make sure he's kicking around and because that's what kind of makes those fish want to eat him. I mean, if, if a minnow comes down there and he's just acting all nonchalant, they might not grab him. But if that minnow's got a lot of kick to him, so when they chase him, he tries to get away, that's the minnow that's going to get eaten the quickest. So just make sure every time you kind of reel in and, and check on your bait and things, make sure you uh, make sure your minnow's still got some life in him. Look here, got him. Boy, that joker slammed it now. He just took it all of a sudden. Another one about that same size. This is fun right here. I wish I had my little girls here. I've got a, I've got a five year old and a 12 year old. And they like to catch fish. I'm sure y'all can relate. They like, uh, they're not real big on the fishing part. They like the catching part. And so they, uh, they like this. They like watching a bobber go down. And using live minnows keeps their mind occupied. So this is a, definitely a good way to, if you got some kids or, or your wife or whatever, you know, anybody can enjoy this. All right, I'll give y'all another little tip here. I've been hooking that minnow through the lips, okay? And they've stolen two of my minnows. So another way I like to rig a minnow, and, and again, these minnows are really too small. You want them a little bit bigger than this, but go right through his tail right here. Right there. And what that does, that makes that minnow sit down there and wiggle back and forth. And it just gives it a different look. A lot of times it'll go ahead and, because a fish usually eats a minnow head first anyway. 
um, it'll make those fish a lot of times go ahead and suck that minnow on in instead of playing around with it. So let's throw that in there and see if it, see if that'll get them to eat. Stays on the hook a little bit better that way also. Here we go, he's eating it right now. Take it, got him. See this, that little adjustment right there. That's a good one too. Just that little adjustment. Oh wow, this is a big crappie. Now one of them fish in there, I ain't gonna say for sure it was the same exact fish, but one of them fish in there stole my, stole my minnow twice. And uh, I hooked him through the tail and I got that big joker. Look at that. He just took that float, just barely, barely eased off with it. And I got him too. Mm. You ever get a crappie in that hard part of the nose, man, they are not coming off. Everybody says, you know, the old timers used to say a crappie's got a paper mouth, you can't set the hook. Listen, if I can't set the hook, I'm not going fishing because that's the best part to me. That's a dang good crappie right there, pushing two pounds. I mean, that's a, that's a big one. We gotta get back in there. Little adjustments make all the difference in the world when you're fishing. I don't care if you're crappie fishing, bass fishing, doesn't matter. Turned around, hooked that minnow through the tail and I got that joker. Here we go. Got him. Well, they like it when you hook it through the tail like that. That's another big old crappie. Good gracious, I think this one's bigger than the last one. Stay on, baby. I just wanna, I just wanna show you off and put you back. That's all I wanna do. Golly, what a crappie. Mm, 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 mm. Well, he wanted it, he ate it won't be hurt if that one was fat i know he'd be two pounds he's probably real real close anyway but what a slab big old black nose let's put her back that's a dang good fish right there there he goes got him i believe that's another crappie oh yeah another good one too I think we can flip that one, yeah. Dang nice one though. Yes sir. I'll tell you something else about using minnows too. A lot of times I've noticed when you're fishing for schools of crappie like I do a lot, a lot of times you can single out the biggest fish in the school with a live minnow for whatever reason. They just like uh, they, they like something that sits right in front of their face and just like tantalizes them. They, they can't take it. After a while, they have to slip up there and get it. I catch a lot of big ones on jigs, but that's because I use jigs mostly and I go through a lot of numbers, you know, to get a big one. But if I was, uh, I don't fish any crappie tournaments, but if I did, I would definitely always have a slip bobber rig tied up. There he is. Another good black nose. Guys, I want to make a point too. I'm using Active Target. Y'all know if you follow the channel, I use Lorance Active Target, and you know a lot of people use Live Scope now, but this is one deal right here. You don't, you definitely do not have to have Live Scope to do this. Um, all you gotta have, you can find these fish with 2D sonar. Just get out here, look around, find you a brush pile, take you a marker buoy. If you don't know what a marker buoy is, just look it up. It's, they're real easy to use. Just as soon as you idle over a brush top, throw that marker buoy out, and then just start casting these minnows around that brush top until you figure out exactly where those fish are. And you can just use that uh, marker buoy as a point of reference and you can catch them that way. So, you know, if you're not a forward-facing sonar guy, that's fine. You can catch them. That's another good thing about this technique right here. You can still catch a lot of crappie. This is about as simple as it gets, to be honest with you. 
I just wanted to throw that in there. I know, you know, a, a lot more people are, are getting forward facing sonar these days and that's great. But if you don't have it, that's not the end of the world. You can still catch some crap. I just, I just, it's important to me that people know that. We got another fish going right here. Got him. Not a good crappie. Not quite as big as the others, but he's still a darn good keeper. Pretty fish. There's a bite. Got him. Might be another one of them big slabs here. He's mad, I know that, he's giving me a fit. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, oh. That's a thick one. Look at that big son of a gun. Come here, boy. Man, what's some pretty crap. There's some big ones right here. Look at that. Mm. I'm gonna get a thumbnail shot with him right quick and we're gonna go. All right, let's get that big girl back. What a pretty fish. It's been a fun, fun day. I'm getting ready to call it quits, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to show a different technique, a different way, a simple way. Anybody can put a minnow on a hook, rig up a slip bobber rig, get out on the lake and catch you some crappie. And that's what it's all about. So appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Go back and watch some of the previous ones if you hadn't. Um, and hit that subscribe button if you hadn't done that yet too. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time right here. Brandon Lester Fishing.